My name is Michael Brooking, local Stocktonian, born and raised in Stockton, California. Born here in 1962, uh, St. Joseph's Hospital. My parents, uh, Martha Brooking, Carl Brooking, um, I have brothers and sisters, my brother Russ, my sister Mary, uh, you know, went to school here, went to grammar school, Woodrow Wilson, Stockton Junior High, probably my favorite experience of any of the schools I went to. Ended up going to Edison High School, part of the busing, the first year of busing. I went to Edison House, Solvike, E House, all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, so my experience in Stockton and downtown Stockton especially is quite long. <clears throat> yeah. I grew up as a child uh, in the basement of Rosenthal's department store sorting hangers for, I don't know, 50 cents an hour or whatever for Mike Rosenthal and when he owned the store. Eventually my dad purchased the store from him after he passed away. And, you know, growing up here in Stockton, having an interesting time. And uh, today, in this day, we have this, um, uh, you know, fentanyl, Vicodin, uh, this wave of, of uh, drugs that have come through. But when I was growing up, there was a wave of cocaine that came through here. And, and Mike, uh, went, you know, for, unfortunately for me, I did, it was one of the things that I did not steer away from in high school. And by the time I was in the high school, I was every parent's worst nightmare. You know, the kids strung out on, uh, uh, strung out on crack, basically. And, uh, you know, I did all the things that any drug addict would do, I'd steal from you, you know, rip you off, family, friends, didn't matter, you know. And like every story, most of the time, you know, I ended up, uh, at the end of the story, you know, Mike's uh, homeless, living out of my car on the levee, and, uh, you know, and that's kind of where, you know, I, uh, I ended up, you know, <laughs> and, uh, for me, uh, as a child, I, you know, the camera, um, how, I, how I got involved with photography, uh, my, my parents read voraciously, my dad did especially. We had magazines, we had books, and everyone read, and, and there was always books and magazines. That's, you know, and, and I loved reading stuff, and, you know, Popper Mechanics, Science, Life Magazine, and National Geographic, and I was always fascinated with photos. And uh, especially, it was, I was about nine years old, I think it was 1970, 71, somewhere in there, and there was a, an issue of Life magazine, and it was done all in black and white. It was these portraits, and, and there were iconic photos, like the little girl running down the street, um, you know, with the napalm burning behind her, uh, the monk self-emulating himself, um, uh, the Vietnamese soldier being shot in the head by the bullets going through his head, you know. And then there was iconic images of musicians, Rolling Stones, Beatles, and just black and white images that I just, I liked and was gravitated, gravitated towards. And my dad had a camera around the house. It was a Nicromat, little 35 millimeter camera he had purchased, in, I guess, in the Korean War. And uh, it was just sitting in a drawer and I asked him if I could, um, if I could use it, and and he said I could have it, you know. And my mom took me, and I think it was Meadows or Gluskins, one of those, one of those stores, and got a roll of 35 millimeter black and white film and put it in the camera, and I I went on this I thought was a Pulitzer Prize winning uh, journey on the Calaveras River down to UOP, and uh, you know I'm thinking I'm taking all these cool pictures and. You know, I go and shoot 36 exposures, come back, and you know, my mom takes it. We take it over to, I, like I said, Gluskins, I think, probably I, I, at the time, and waited four days, and they came back, and not one photo came out. They were all just bright and blatched, and not, you know, I didn't know anything about a camera. I thought it was a magic box. You could push the button, and, and uh, you know, but my dad took me down to the library, got me a, a book on photography, and took another role and, you know, shot a lot of roles since and a lot of other photos. So the camera for me has been, uh, I don't know, it was something that always, uh, I, I really, uh, I like taking photos because it took me out of my head, but slow my brain down and, 
So I started shooting pictures uh, uh, voraciously, uh, just trying different stuff, most of it pretty amateur. I think pretty much everybody has had somebody they know uh, deal with addiction or some kind or other. Anyways, I you know ended up um, on this levee. I was trying to get into this recovery house. It was called Recovery House at the time. And I was number 90 on the list, I think. And it was like December of, I don't know, 1984 or 83, somewhere in there. And uh, I was on that list and I could, you know, I was desperate and I had to call that every day and I was just trying to get off the street. And um, it was December 26, 1987, the day before I was number 90. And then the next day they had a bed for me. And, and fortunately for me, you know, that happened. Got enough time away from uh, drugs that, uh, you know, I was pretty young and hadn't fried my brain totally and uh, started hustling. And, and that's where the camera came back for me, actually, when I really, um, it came into my life. I could escape my mind and see things and try to create something. And uh, started shooting a lot. Uh, got to able to, I was uh, at Delta College, they had a, a lab over there and I was able to get into that lab and I used it for several years and that's where I really got proficient at photography, taking, making a lot of mistakes, learning how to you know, print in a lab and, and, uh, yeah, and it saved my ass, you know. Uh, along with a lot of other good friends, you know. I uh, ended up, um, uh, start, you know, at that time, I ended up meeting a guy, uh, a guy named Ed Cigarini, and uh, we hooked up and started, a, you know, he's, uh, we started this company called Holler Produce Company, and did that for several years. Uh, and then after that was done, and, you know, I was shooting pictures the entire time. I've always had the camera there. And, and then uh, changed career paths and had another little run in with, uh, I, I'd like to say that I never did drugs again or any of that, but and that wasn't the case. And I had another little spin out later on with the same drug, cocaine, and um, once again, that uh, yeah, I was fortunate. and. Um, the camera was there, and that was really when it was there. When I came back and I needed this, you know, something to grab onto, and, and I started working in the construction industry for DD Construction, and did a few years with them, and and uh, and then in uh, almost uh, 11 years ago, um, my dad got had gotten sick. He had gotten diagnosed with Parkinson's, and and he was living by himself. My mother had passed away, and and um, um, he needed somebody to be around. And it was after 2008, the crash, and there was nothing. You know, construction was winding down then. And about two, it was about 2011, I guess, when uh, um, I moved in with my father, and uh, and actually. Uh, got to know him, you know. He had Parkinson's at the time, but he was very functional, you know, very there and just a cool guy. Got to learn a lot about Stockton. and uh, I never knew him as a kid because he just worked. Oh, I, you know, my dad just worked. As a kid growing up, you know, that's what people did. Especially, you know, my mom and dad came, they were kids in the Depression era, so, um, you know, they had a different mindset. They, they were hardworking, uh, good people. This little shop, uh, my friend had, Dave Qualls, had the little Blackwater Annex on 13 South San Joaquin Street, and I knew about it, and I'd seen him, and he was getting out, he wanted to get out of that business and go on to do what he's doing now, which is teaching, and, and I was looking for something, not, you, know, I, I, you know, I always had this dream of having a coffee shop, and, I, and that happened from when I was a kid. Same thing, hanging out at the Blackwater Cafe, I looked at that place, and I thought, oh, this would be cool. You know, this is a cool scene here. I liked all the music. That was a, an interesting time also, you know, um, in Stockton for me. In November of 
2011, I acquired Red's uh, coffee shop, and, or I acquired uh, the space where Red's is now, and I started Red's. And, and uh, I'm so grateful for that place. Um, and, and the community we have uh, that's, that's grown up around, uh, uh, around me down here. But I met some unique individuals, uh, you know, uh, a guy named Pete Fox, who was the, the public defender at the time. Um, a very, very unique individual and spent a lot of time with him and uh, got some different perspectives on things that I thought I knew. You know, and uh, met a lot of other public defenders and DAs and judges and people who work for the county and uh, that's the community down here. And, and over those, uh, when I first opened up, there's a little barber shop next to me and uh, a little Asian guy named Don the Guy, he was 90 years old and he was the last barber in this little space. And, it was a trippy barber shop. You go in there, there's piles of Playboy, and it, this was a mess and disaster. Uh, and this little old dude, and um, and then Don had gotten cancer and got sick and uh, could no longer have that spot. And that spot became available. And I went over and I was talking to this one guy who was a barber here, and and. Uh, um, and I was telling him, hey man, you might want to check this place out. It's a great spot for somebody if, if they have an idea of opening up a shop. And, uh, and Stephen Herter was in that shop and he, he ear jacked the conversation and, and hit me up. And uh, um, yeah, and then the neighborhood started to change. Stephen and, and his girl Jill came in and opened up the, the Golden Rose. And, we had uh, 10 space happening down here, which was a really, you know, uh, exciting time for downtown. And so, you, got, you know, you got the cast iron and a bunch of other projects, murals, people were excited. There was stuff happening, you know. Uh, downtown was just a fun place to be. There was very cool artistic people. Um, you know, people had moved into the community from the Bay Area and started furniture building shops. and. Just, you know, there was cool stuff happening. And when I first opened up, there was maybe one shop open on the block and the barber shop who was barely open. And, and, uh, and today, you know, we got Steven and the shop we're shooting in here. This is Theo's little, you know, shop. These are all his art pieces behind me. And, you know, we have a cool little community down here. Um, up the street, you got Cast Iron Trading Company. We got Huddle, which is a you know co-op workspace that Matt Amon runs, and uh, you know we have the corner store over here. Samir and his brother. You know, uh, it's just been you know been part of this community. We also have all the homeless and crazies. And um, if anybody asks me for a cup of coffee if they're homeless or whatever, I just say yes because you know. Who knows how people get where they're at, as long as they're not rude or anything. And when I first started, you know, in 2011, I maybe gave five, six cups of coffee a week, and, and now I'm giving a couple of pots a day. Anyways, it's part of the community, um, and, uh, you know, it's been f uh, exciting and fun, and uh, it's changed me a lot. Uh, um, you know, I have uh, just, a, you, I have such a great, wide, diverse group of friends, you know, through my shop. And uh, um, I'm just really grateful. Uh, and along the way, I've been shooting photos, you know, shooting photos the entire time down here of all different kinds of people. And um, I, I, I've taken the... Uh, I started taking several years ago. I used two cameras. Uh, they're right behind me here, this, these two here. Um, one's a Pentax 67 and a Mia RZ67. They were film cameras used in the late 70s, early 80s, and they make a 6x7 image, which is a perfect 8x10. And over the last uh, six, seven years, I've been doing, I, I guess the genre would be street portrait, you know. I say, hey, can I take your picture? And I put you in the middle of the street or on a sidewalk and put one shot and 
I either got it or didn't, and uh, yeah. Um, I'm gonna be doing a show September 30th, and we're calling it uh, Three Blocks, Two Cameras, One Obsession, and these are all f photos of all the people, you know, that have meant something to me, or you know, that I at least wanted to take their photo. And, you know, most people, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see those photos, but that's not truly a photo, you know. A photo has to be printed, and uh, those are digital images, and uh, um, anyways, I'm doing a show, and um, yeah, the camera saved my ass and still does to this day. Yeah, I, I've been fortunate enough to have uh, s many cool communities here in Stockton. Uh, the one that's probably helped me the most over the last few years is, uh, is my yoga community and, uh, and uh, friends and people who have taught me to breathe <laughs> along the way, you know. Uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm, my, you know, like I said, my father read a lot and was always looking at Eastern stuff. And I, I remember as a kid just, you know, being open to yoga and other people's stuff because that was around and I was curious about it and read about it, but I was just too busy in my mind. And, uh, um, but over the last few years uh, with the coffee shop, I, I started, uh, uh, practicing yoga uh, about the same time uh, I got the shop a couple years afterwards uh, first started at in shape city and there was this woman named Franca and she actually gave me the first class that I actually felt something afterwards and then and then I went to this another Pam Lewis who had uh, vinyasa flow studio uh, probably the best vinyasa teacher I've ever had and she was and that was an ass kicking studio I got introduced to uh, True You Yoga from a couple of friends who uh, knew I did yoga and they were going over there and they were doing this hot Pilates uh, class and they said, hey, why don't you come check this thing out? And it cost 20 bucks for 10 days and I remember showing up over there and uh, thought I was in pretty good shape, you know, and uh, I remember going into this class and the teacher was a scout named Anna. Ah, anyways, love that gal. My favorite teacher at that studio because she was the first person who welcomed me there and uh, taught me how to breathe. But that class there, she kicked my ass. I remember being in that class thinking I'm gonna friggin' die. And, uh, you know, the heat and my legs were, I didn't, you know, what was going on. And uh, the next day I came back and I took a class, a vinyasa class from a gal named Amanda. And after that, I was hooked and, uh, you know, grateful for Helena, who started that studio and that community and grateful for my friend Lisa, who has it now. And um, if it wasn't for that, especially over the last three years, you know, living through uh, what we've all lived through, I'm grateful that uh, I've had the camera and yoga and the community around Reds and this downtown community. The whole 10 space thing, Tim Egan, who, man, that was just a fucking bummer. Uh, when he got murdered, it kind of changed the whole uh, trajectory of what was going on down here and things got different. And for me, I'm kind of winding my time down here. I'm gonna, you know, my plan is, uh, uh, I'm moving on in this chapter. I'm kind of, this show is kind of an end to an era for me here. I've got other plans for another part of my journey and uh, um, I'm just looking forward to, uh, you know, I want to share this little show with the community of people that let me take the photos. Yeah, I, I've been very fortunate, you know, to have all the, uh, these communities, the, the yoga community, especially now, um, you know, uh, that uh, we have Lisa and Eugene and 
they've introduced another kind of yoga that's got me all excited about that. And it's called FISM. And um, I'm just grateful that, you know, I'm um, at 61, I'm active and healthy, uh, excited about life. You know, uh, I have been so fortunate, you know, I know so many cool people and that have um, been a part of my life and part of my journey and, you know, uh, you know <laughs> I'm still a work in progress. I still do stupid shit, um, you know, uh, still hurt people, not as much as, usual, as I did and, uh, you know, um, I'm just um, fortunate to be here and to be able to uh, still be here. I mean, I've had so many friends along the way that uh, are gone, especially doing the madness that I was. And uh, um, to still be here and uh, in somewhat, you know, a pretty sane mind, uh, I'm grateful, you know. Grateful for this street, San Joaquin Street, and uh, all the businesses that have been here and people, uh, people that have supported my shop uh, you know, through all the, you know, I think I've been broke into four times over the years. And uh, I've had GoFundMes that people have stepped up and helped me out. I, you know, just very fortunate. This is a cool community of people down here. You know, the Cast Iron Trading Company and that whole crew. Uh, We've just had so much fun over these last few years, at least I have. Uh, uh, yeah. Stockton's an interesting place, you know. Uh, the best people in the world uh, I've met are from Stockton, California. Yeah. Uh, I'm an optimist. Uh, I can't, you know, I don't want to be a pessimist. It feels shitty. You know, I'm optimistic about the future, the future downtown. I think that this place is wide open. There's so much opportunity here. And eventually, I know the stuff's going to line up. And um, yeah, uh, live like Tim. That was a, a saying. And uh, if you ever met that guy, you know, I only had a few interactions with him, but he was a, I liked him, liked him a lot. Uh, wish he was here.